reproductive system. It travels up to the fallopian tubes, searching for an egg to fertilize. This is the start of potential conception. Sperm penetrates the outer layer of the egg. Only one sperm can successfully break through this layer, and once it does, the surface of the egg changes immediately to prevent any other sperm from entering. When the sperm enters the egg, the tail is no longer needed and disintegrates. The head of the sperm fuses with the egg. The sperm's nucleus, which carries the father's DNA, fuses with the egg's nucleus, which contains the mother's DNA. The genetic material from both mother and father combines to create a complete set of 46 chromosomes, half of which are inherited from each parent. This single cell, known as a zygote, is the first cell of the developing embryo. It carries all the genetic instructions necessary to form a new individual. The zygote begins a rapid process of cell division. It divides into two cells, then four, then eight, forming a small, growing ball of cells. As the cells are dividing, gentle muscle contractions in the tube's walls and tiny hair-like structures called cilia propel the zygote along the fallopian tube toward the uterus. This journey typically takes about three to five days. By the time the zygote reaches about 16 to 32 cells, it becomes what's called a marilla, which looks like a tiny cluster of cells. By four days of development, the marilla begins to absorb fluid and a large cavity called the blastocyst, blastocell, forms within it. The blastocyst has an outer layer of cells that will eventually form the placenta and an inner group of cells that will develop into the baby. When the blastocyst finally reaches the uterus by day five, it hatches out of its outer membrane. The blastocyst attaches itself to the uterine lining, known as the endometrium. This process is called implantation. This allows the blastocyst to attach to the uterine wall, enabling it to obtain nutrients and oxygen from the mother's blood supply, supporting its continued growth and development. In rare cases, unusual events can occur during the early stages of cell division. The developing cell splits into two distinct groups, each with the same complete set of DNA from the original fertilized egg. These two groups of cells continue to divide independently, and each one will eventually develop into a baby. The exact mechanism that triggers the splitting of a zygote is not yet fully understood. Potential genetic factors, along with certain environmental influences, such as specific fertility treatments, may affect the likelihood of this occurrence. Identical twins can form at any point from the first couple of days after fertilization, up to about two weeks. The split's timing determines how much the twins share within the womb. The earliest separation is believed to occur at the two-cell stage, in which two separate zygotes develop. This early split leads to each twin developing separately with its own amniotic sac and placenta. These are called dichorionic de-amniotic twins. Each twin has its own environment within the womb. This is the most common and lowest risk scenario for identical twins. If the split occurs a bit later, four to eight days after fertilization, usually after the marilla has developed into a blastocyst. These are called monochorionic de-amniotic twins, meaning they share one placenta, but each has its own amniotic sac. This setup occurs in most identical twin pregnancies and results in the twins having a shared blood supply, but separate pockets in the uterus. Sharing a placenta can result in complications like twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome, TTTS. In this condition, one twin receives most of the blood flow and flow to the other is compromised. As a result, one twin is larger than the other. The outcome is poor, with the death of both twins occurring in 50% to 70% of cases. However, because each twin has its own amniotic sac, they are protected from becoming entangled with each other's umbilical cords, which reduces some of the associated risks.